why on earth would these ladies want to become gun owners? Ashley Herzog with uh, townhall.com is with us. Ashley, good evening. Hi. How are, are you, you doing? doing? I, I'm, I'm great. Thanks for coming on the program. Oh, you're welcome. So you wrote last week uh, a, a column, uh, uh, Good Guys with Guns. This week you're talking about girls with guns. You uh, you mentioned this uh, a, a woman from uh, 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 Georgia uh, who defended uh, herself and her uh, kids from a home intruder, but she's far from the only uh, female armed citizen that's actually been in the news lately. Um, yeah, I think you're talking about the woman. Uh, she caught someone breaking in with a crowbar, and she was home alone with her nine-year-old twins. And once I, I saw the story because several people had posted it on Facebook, and once I got into looking at other examples of uh, women who have defended either their homes or uh, from robberies with a gun, I mean, the examples were so numerous, even just in the past year, that it was really sort of amazing to me, and that's why I decided to write the column. i got to tell you, I mean, we cover armed citizen stories every night in this program, so I was aware of most of these, but not all of them. You talked about a uh, case two weeks ago of a, a woman in Abilene, Texas, LaWanda Taylor, uh, who woke up at 2 o'clock in the morning. Her uh, ex-boyfriend had broken into the home. He was violent. He began assaulting her. And she was able to use her firearm to defend herself and her two kids. Yeah, he broke into the house in the middle of the night and was beating her up. And I guess this guy was so bad that... Um, that people who covered this story basically said she probably would have ended up dead if she had not been able to retrieve her gun. And uh, I think what I was what I was hoping, I mean, I was kind of preaching to the choir on this, uh, posting on a town hall, was that these incidents, like the Lawanda Taylor story, just don't get any, I mean, you're not going to turn on the TV and hear that name. Um, it just doesn't get the kind of coverage no, that it should. You're, you're right, Ashley. And I got to tell you, I mean, very rarely do these stories get the attention uh, that they should, in my opinion. I mean, you talk about the uh, the woman Sarah McKinley uh, last New Year's Eve defending herself and her baby. Uh, she was a new widow. Uh, the circumstances of that story were were such that it did get a lot of attention, uh, even international attention, but. You know, every day there, there, there are these stories here of uh, women who are and men who are acting in self-defense. And the armed citizen stories, as you say, they get reported locally. But but yeah. why the heck did this not did this story not break out of Abilene, Texas uh, for LaWanda Taylor? I mean, I'm not even sure that, you know, Dallas, Fort Worth or the Austin American Statesman or, uh, you know, the Houston Chronicle would have reported on this story. No, and they didn't. Um, I used to live in Texas, actually. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, that's, that was uh, what the point I was trying to make in my column is that even with instances like the Mayan, I mean, it's one thing to cover a story about a, a home invasion because it really only affects the person living there. Uh, something like the Mayan 14 incident where a guy uh, basically busted into a movie theater and started shooting and was taken down by a female cop with a gun. Um, I mean, why is... Uh, of course we should talk about about Newtown and the Aurora shooting, but why not also cover this story of basically the same type of scenario when it was brought to a halt by an armed citizen? Well, yeah, and, and again, I mean, it's a, you, you point out the double standard perfectly because... We we uh, we want to have a conversation about uh, uh, guns, and we want to have a a discussion, uh, uh, Ashley, about uh, you know common sense regulations. But really, what they want to have is uh, they want to get their way, and they don't really want to have a conversation because then you may bring up things like armed citizens, and and that's not something that they really want to talk about. Yeah, and I think um, because I you know I was uh, trained in journalism at Ohio University. I haven't only written for town hall or conservative publications. I've worked in the mainstream media, as we call it. Um, and they're not necessarily biased in the stories that they do cover. Um, it's more like they they are able to suppress certain stories. They decide what's going to be covered and what, not, what isn't. So they can definitely um, influence public perception that way. 
Well, absolutely. And, you know, there, there are so many things that I think we're seeing here because the, you know, I, while I jokingly refer to the media or the uh, entertainment industrial complex, I mean, these are institutions and companies that are made up of individuals. Uh, I think a lot of the bad reporting that's going on uh, are coming from reporters and anchors who simply don't know a lot about this story and yet are expected to have an opinion. Uh, and, and so they're just, you know, spouting off uh, stuff out of the top of their head. And in a lot of cases, they don't know what they're talking about. But, but, but what you talk about and what you've honed in is, is I, I think, a little bit, um, it's a little bit deeper. I mean, it, when, when you're rejecting either consciously or subconsciously these stories because they, they may advance a viewpoint that you aren't comfortable with, and so therefore these stories don't get covered, you know, that, that is a form of bias that is, uh, a lot of times it's very hard to detect because we're talking about the stories that don't show up as opposed to the writing or the slant of the stories that, that do appear. Yeah, and uh, John Lott, who's a famous economist, had pointed out that in incidents where a shooter was stopped by someone who was armed, um, even when it is covered in the media, they use kind of, deceptive language. They say that the gunman was subdued or he was tackled. They they leave out. Uh, I, I don't have the information in front of me, but it's something like over 90% of the news stories leave out the part that the, the people who took down the gun, gunman, like at Appalachian uh, School of Law, they just leave out the part that uh, they were actually confronted by people with legally owned guns. Um, well, yeah, but again, you know, with, with, with Lot, I mean, as we've seen, uh, you know, he was on CNN and again, his idea of simply stating, uh, the, the question of, look, find the, find me the place where, uh, a, a, a violence or, or, you know, violent crime has gone down after these draconian gun control laws have been introduced. You can't find it. You know, actually they won't even deal with a statement like that. Uh, seriously, instead, it's just they, they, you know, they roll their eyes uh, as, oh, come on, that can't be true. And they don't bother trying to figure out if it is or not. And by the way, it is. Yes. So I think that is absolutely true. And um, I mean, like you said, a lot of people who work in the media not only don't know about guns, they're, I, I have found them to actually be uh, opponents of gun ownership. Uh, people who hate the NRA are usually the least informed about the issue. Um, the, I mean, just from a, my objective take on it, gun control advocates are usually the least informed. Um, people from supporters of the NRA, pro-gun people, are usually much more knowledgeable about what they're talking about. And uh, they're also just, in my opinion, more honest. They're willing to talk about well, yes, we can address Newtown. We also need to talk about how many incidents, how many violent crimes are stopped by guns every year. Absolutely. Hey, listen, Ashley, really appreciate you coming on the program tonight. Great talking to you, and uh, hope we can do it again soon. Yeah, thank you, Cameron.